Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.G. Chichester, superhero movie brackets, and our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luca Perch, host of a Totally Turtle Sports and Gaming YouTube channel, and you're listening to the Occasion Lunatics Podcast Network. Black Knights, Demigods, and Magneto, oh my. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up, kids. That's what I was looking for. There we go. <laughs> it's like one Avengers song or another. All right. <laughs> I was too I was too worried about the intro. All right. That's right, kids. Welcome back to episode four of Marvel Tales. I am Phil joining me as always. Hercules is number one fan. Well, number two fan after Ray. It is. <laughs> Justin the L. <laughs> coming coming in to wrest the ebony blade from the Black Knight. Hey Oaks. That's right, kids. Tonight, we are covering Avengers 47 and 48, Volume 1, Volume 1, kids. Yeah, the original. Yes. Yep. The, Going uh, back to the double digits of the Avengers. I know. <laughs> In the Volume 1, from 1967. So close, Will. Yeah, so close. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I'm like, I thought we had a point that, you know... <laughs> I remember saying either something big, you know, like a show was coming for some of these issues or, hey, we just love this. I'm like, why did we? I know we wanted to pick the first appearance of the Black Knight, but why? Well, I love him. And I couldn't remember actually reading these issues. It had been so long. I was like, I, God, think I, I can't remember this. And I remember Magneto was in him, but that was about all I remembered. Um so I wanted, it was more for my, for me to go back. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. But also, I, I heard murmurings that he was going to be in a future MCU project like Blade. Yeah. Like when the, the yeah. Blade film, and I is that coming out at the end of this year or is it next year, Phil? The Blade project. As far as I know, I thought it was like the end of this year, but you that's what I thought too. You never know. So that it? that was another reason I thought because I heard that he was going to show up in that next after we saw him introduced in, in Eternals. And I thought, oh, cool. Well, if he's if he's coming at the end of the year, we should talk about him a little bit. Yes, and as you said, there's there'll be a quick uh, little appearance by Hercules. Uh, mm. Oh yeah, a beardless Hercules <laughs> <laughs> just just happened to appear in this issue. We're not pandering to anyone or anything. Yeah, no, no, no. Just, just a cameo really appearance. Nice oh yeah. Uh, it's a lot of meat. <laughs> Beefy. Olympian beef. All right. So. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's jump into these. Uh... Yeah. All right. So, yes. Uh, Avengers 47 tonight from cover date December 1967. Magneto walks the earth. Writer Roy Thomas, penciler John Buscema, inker George Tuska, colorist Stan Goldberg, letterer L.P. Gregory, and editor Stan Lee himself. Stan Lee. Stan yeah. Lee and old Roy working together again. Excelsior. <laughs> Give it the old once over. That was good. <laughs> All right. Uh... On the stranger's home world, Magneto and the Toad plot their escape as their <laughs> captor, the stranger, has lately become disinterested in them and preoccupied with other concerns. Magneto's abilities enable him to sense radio waves emanating from Earth. Of yes, course. it wasn't it. It was like in some early X Men. Yeah, the strangers just like took them, and it's like, oh, we'll never have to worry about Magneto again. Uh, yeah, I think that was when they were trying to write him off the first time. They're like, what? We've got to get rid of this guy. How are we going to do it? Oh, we'll have the stranger come along and be like, ooh, pretty shiny toy. I'll take him away and call him George and pet him and stroke him and love him. Whoa. 
but uh yes he's he's lost interest uh in these he got bored yeah he got he got a new toy didn't he say the abomination <laughs> that's right <laughs> Host of, uh, gamma charge yes he's out of the abomination yeah uh, that was his new George for a while. I shall call him George and stroke him and pet him and love him. My other, these other pets bore me. I got a lizard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised you never found Zemnu. I thought that Zemnu oh, would be yeah. perfect for the stranger's little menagerie, but they never cross paths, I don't think. Oh, there was all kinds of D-listers and um, oh, when uh, we were doing Quantum Zone. And it, it, the Quasar were, issue. Yeah, yeah I so remember that one. Four, four parter. Yeah, yeah. There was all yeah. kinds of D-listers in that. And oh, I, lo I love that one. I love that one. You could tell in that issue, Mark Grunewald was just having so much fun with all those, because mm -hmm. he loved all those D-list characters. Yeah, I love that issue. That was so much fun. Uh, but meanwhile, the Avengers are stunned when Captain America announces that he's resigning. <gasps> He curtly tells the Avengers that he's leaving to live his own life and wants nothing more to do with any of them. Even as he stalks away, Cap regrets his words and worries about how his now ex-teammates will think of him, but he can't tell them the real reason for his departure. Mm. I know, wasn't it wasn't part of it. He was just like, oh, I didn't want them to... Uh... <laughs> I, yeah. I, I tried to act rude. So. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so they won't beg me to to stay. Yeah, they won't feel pity, and I'm like, that's that does that that doesn't seem like Cap to me, you know? Yeah, it was kind of weird. Yeah, that whole scene was very strange. I mean, he has his own book, doesn't he? It's just like, can he just be like, yeah, I got tons to do, so you know? Yeah, just I'm going on hiatus. Call me if you need me. I mean, that could have that could have done right. Old backhand Pim and his lady are back. I mean, I can leave. <laughs> I think this is before the back. Oh, this though, is way before. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's not until like after two hundred. Yeah, no. yeah. This is this is before Yellow Jacket. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because that was, was a, that was a sign of uh, yeah, mentally uh, secure uh, person. Yeah, just because uh, <laughs> he first shows up Yellow Jacket, he's like, yeah, I killed Hank Pym. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> I was rereading the the Kang Dynasty omnibus, oh. and I forgot that Yellow Jack he brought Yellow Jacket back for that. I forgot about that. I was like, "Oh wow!" Mm -hmm. But yeah, in this story, Hank was rocking the the blue and gold. Yeah, is it Goliath already? Uh... I think it was Goliath. Or I, when he when he shrinks down at one point, the ants call him Ant Man, but I guess they just recognize his pheromones and not what he's wearing. I guess yeah, because he got because it's like. Yeah, it was Ant Man, but it's like at one point he was Giant Man, another point he was Goliath. Giant Man, Goliath, yeah. Then eventually Hawkeye becomes Goliath. Mm. Someone else was Giant Man. Mm. Yeah, they're pretty free and loose with the names over at Marvel. <laughs> was that Black Goliath? <laughs> <laughs> For a while, yeah. Oh God, Black Goliath. I think I watched a movie called that once. Whoa! It's okay, Lil. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Oh, way too! Oh my god! Way too here! Uh, oh, Salty and was that Salty and Petty? Let me do that. We did two last night. On well, one, she was like, or was it after the episode? She was like, "Oh no, it was on an episode." She was explaining to me how to find porn on Twitter. Oh, <laughs> it's very easy. <laughs> I know she's like, especially after a certain time. I was like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah. And if you know the right names to look for, you could go in a loop for days. Oh my god! And if I, again, listen to Sodium Petty, but it's just like, yeah. If any of you know how to make a realistic android love doll, I mean, you can name it Christ <laughs> World Hellfire. <laughs> yeah. Especially if it looks like Joe Manganiello. Joe Manganiello can get it. Is that a sentient tongue? <laughs> Is that a sentient tongue? It's a giant sized man thing. Oh, now, you feel, now you feel Ray's pain, Lola. Why is it there? <laughs> Speaking of Ray, Hercules returns to Greece after discovering a possible way to get back to Olympus. He sets out to traverse the dimensional barriers. Hail. Ooh. Oh my. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here's what Justin's waiting for. In England, scientist Dane Whitman 
reflects on his private shame. His uncle was the supervillain known as the Black Knight, a member of the original Masters of Evil. The Black Knight died after falling from his winged horse during a confrontation with Iron Man. He died in Dane's arms after confessing to his criminal deeds. Dane hopes to make amends for his uncle's misdeeds somehow. <sighs> Iron Man was all like, yeah, you and the horse you rode in on. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, black knight. <laughs> All right, but Dane's tra traitorous assistant Norris accidentally sabotages his most recent experiment, enabling Magneto and Toad to escape back to Earth from Lab World. <laughs> lab World. Uh, after subduing Dane and killing Norris, Magneto plans to revive the Masters of Evil. Although he decides to ignore Mastermind for the time being, he sends a coded message to Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch. The twins travel to Whitman Castle and fall into Magneto's trap. They refuse to rejoin the Brotherhood, but Magneto is confident he can persuade them. Magneto and Toad then depart with their captives. Uh, so that's issue, that's the first issue. Mm. Just looking at these notes here. Uh, yeah, Dane Whitman comes the Black Knight. Doesn't become a full member until Avengers 71. That's right, yeah. And then after this, Cap's in and out. I mean, he shows up in Avengers 51, 52, 56, Annual 2. Doesn't return to full-time active duty until Avengers 93, though. Oh, wow. Was it that late? Yeah. 93. Wow. But again, yeah, he pops in and out. But yeah, he's yeah. 93. Uh, yeah, see, when, when I started reading Avengers, he was a full-time member. I think yeah. he was a permanent member. I think it was... The lineup was Wasp, Monica Rambeau, Captain Marvel, She-Hulk, oh, yeah, Star, Star Fox, yeah. and yeah. I think that's the era Will said he started reading Avengers and he he read Avengers religiously until a certain point in time uh, that kind of that knocked them off permanently. Tremendous, oh. tremendous, tremendous. I don't think he's ever. I, yeah, I, I, I can under, I can empathize with that completely. It's a. <laughs> yeah, Wolverine and Spider Man. Yeah. Especially after Kurt Busiek's Busiek's tremendous run. Oh Avengers. yeah. Like if if it hadn't come directly after that that triumphant run with especially with Kang Dynasty and all that stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and yeah, at this point, Magneto doesn't know Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver are his children. Yes, when I was gonna ask too, when was that big revelation made? I think it, I remember them referencing it. I think it might be in the is it the first Scarlet, uh, Vision and Scarlet Witch miniseries, maybe? Oh, the first one, okay, I think maybe, mm. yeah, that, that, but that's not like the early 80s, so I'm like, is it was it that long? Yeah, I could have sworn it was earlier than that, but. Hmm. I think it's something stupid, like you know, it start they start realizing they're like, wait a minute, they're like, oh yes, it, he must be. You look, you look a, a lot like him, Pietro. <laughs> the silver hair it was a dead giveaway. Exactly. I love how ugly they make Magneto look in this too. Both him right. and and the Toad are both like hideous. Like, oh yes, because they're evil. The evil, ugly bad guys. Especially on that last page where the, the toad's leaping up in the air. Yeah, we'll show him, Master. <laughs> Me, <laughs> meanwhile, then you get to like the eighties and like Jim Lee, and he's like drawing him, you know, like an eighty-year-old Magneto, <laughs> like he's like, you know, like yes, five. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, yeah, all that all that magnetic uh, energy keeps him young. Oh, he must have been like came and gone already. Scream it! Oh, <laughs> scream it! <laughs> Hey Russell, maybe maybe he uh, heard maybe across the country he heard us say abomination. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Scream at! <laughs> oh. <laughs> so so somewhere I, I, uh, I him and Lil are uh, relaxing in different parts of the country, drinking their Mountain Dew. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Different flavors of Mountain Dew, too, probably. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, I don't know. Wait, that's the one thing I don't know is what flavor she drinks. Yeah, I thought she liked the, the different ones, the different flavors. No, it never goes with brown liquor. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
kids. Wait to hear something <laughs> petty episode four. Oh, Lilith Hellfire took herself on a date last night. Oh, I Ooh. I'll go oh, into I've more to, detail. <laughs> Ooh, I've got to hear that one. Mm-hmm. Or, or she was about to, so. Oh, I see. Yes. Uh, oh, it says here there's references to X Men 11 and 18. So, yeah, I thought it was like around then. Yeah, 18, I think, is when The Stranger takes The Stranger, yeah. Out. And was that the, I think that was the first appearance of The Stranger, too, wasn't it, in that story? I think, if not that one, like, yeah, it was like, but some of those early X Men's, if he made it, he might have made an appearance before that, but yeah, he mm. did, though. It was one of his first, first ones, if not, yeah. I love like you know these the era of Stan where like all the aliens were just like look like men but just like they were giant like the Stranger yeah. or Galactus, right? They were huge or they had weird mustaches. Yeah, he's Looks alien. Like horned he has... helmets. Yeah, <laughs> he's alien because he has a funky mustache. Yeah, um, but they all but they all still look look like old white men. Yes. Yeah, Caucasian. Exactly. <laughs> Caucasian aliens. Everyone. Yeah. <laughs> They were big and they had giant mustaches. <laughs> Weird with me now. <laughs> Alien life forms. <laughs> oh, I'm so tired, kids. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Any thoughts on this first one, or do you want to jump to the next one? Now? Yeah, I forgot there wasn't a whole lot in this one. Yeah, it was like a brief intro to Dane Whitman, the character. Yeah. A little bit of a flashback, some stuff with her, with uh, biscuit Hercules, <laughs> clean shaven Hercules, um, yeah, yeah, and all this stuff with Magneto and the Toad and and Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then and Captain America's little meltdown. I thought that was so weird. I was like, "What are you doing, Cap?" Yeah, because I hadn't read these in many, many years. I think it was part of a collection. I might, it might have been the Essentials. Remember when they used to put like uh, the black and white copies? The black and white collections. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think I read this in those, and I just probably was like just passing through. Yeah, yeah. I used to love those. That was how I read the first Moon Knight run originally. Was in one of those. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I got that first Moon Knight one too. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it had the stories from the Hulk. Uh, the yes. Hulk magazine too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And those look so good in black and white. Oh yeah. But yeah, there wasn't a whole lot that happened in this one. I mean, yeah, I forgot about Cap's little meltdown in that. And it was cool to see this lineup of the Avengers, though. I like I like this early lineup. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my God, this cover for forty eight. I mean, oh man, yeah. The the Black Knights. I mean, the, the costume changed a little bit, but almost <laughs> when you see him in modern times, it almost looks like in this one he has the cape on inside out because the cape is yellow. Right. Yeah. But that's really the only change. Everything else is pretty much the same costume, except in the '90s they had those. Oh, I hated those stupid leather jackets that they put on on, on the Avengers. Then, oh man, didn't I hate that? It looks so stupid. And he and he had a lightsaber. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but other than that, the co- the costumes have been pretty much the same thing. Oh yeah, the leather jackets. It's like <laughs> some of it made sense. I mean, Cersei was literally wearing like a like a bathing suit. It's just yeah, like, oh, a jacket. <laughs> and and Black Widow. I mean, it kind of looked good on Black Widow because she just had that that gray bodysuit at the time. So it's yeah, like, yeah. Well, I'm gonna put something on over that. Cool, but. Like to put crystal or or the black knight in that. What do you? This looks so stupid. God. Yeah, I don't like I don't like theme. Like the one thing that irritates me is costume, like theme uh, costumes for for superhero teams when they all have identical. Oh costumes. yeah, like those original X Men costumes. Yeah, and when I saw this new Guardians of the Galaxy trailer, I was oh, like, oh yeah. god. Yeah. They're going with those ugly damn costumes from the from the Andy Landing right. Oh man. I, I started shaking my head immediately. I was like, here we go. Let's, we have to look at those ugly ass costumes for two hours. All right. Uh I know. For, I mean for the MCU Guardians, that makes no sense. I yeah. mean, unless there's a story point, but still. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not I'm not a fan of the of the identical costumes for superhero teams. I think it's stupid. The only time it ever looked good was uh, when Alpha Flight did it very briefly in the early yeah. 90s. They kind yeah. of all had theme costumes, but 
the way that they were designed actually looked cool. It mm-hmm. looked like it makes sense, but everybody else's looked so dumb. Makes sense for Green Lanterns, damn it. <laughs> that's well, that, that's a different, yeah. 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 All right. So Avengers 48 from January 1968. The Black Knight lives again. Lives again. He's back. This time it's personal. This time it's nepotism. (laughs) Uh, Writer Roy Thomas, penciler and inker George Tuska. It's a Mm. colorist uncredited. Letterer Artie Simic and editor Stan Lee. Uh, Oh, Roy. (laughs) I was about to say, wait a second. Well, where did I hear the name Marty Simic recently? I think he, uh, Loth and I just did a uh, Spider Cast on uh, Amazing Spider Man 11 and 12, the original. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. When Betty, yeah, Betty, Betty uh, Brand's brother gets killed. And, yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, he definitely would have been in that one. Then the next issue when uh, Dr. Octopus unmasked Peter Parker, and it's just like, <laughs> <laughs> this can't be. Where's the. <laughs> 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 Betty Brand, aka the Bride of Mephisto, right? Oh, just wait till that yeah. episode. Yes. Yeah. 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 See, I'm on board for this theory. I totally think it tracks. Oh, we really with, jumped with, into that. With, yeah. With, with Betty Brand's history, if you read between the lines, it makes absolute sense. Uh oh boy, this is a short synopsis. Quicksilver and the Scarlet Witch are held captive by Magneto, but Quicksilver manages to send a distress signal. Hercules continues to search deserted Olympus for clues. Hawkeye, Goliath, and the Wasp receive the distress call. Meanwhile, deciding to use his uncle's inventions for good, Dade Whitman becomes the new Black Knight. He goes to the Avengers to help them, but mistaking him for evil, they attack. Dade becomes angry when they do not believe him, so he flies off on his own. (sighs) That's okay. Oh, yeah, and uh, in this issue, it refers to his horse as Pegasus, but in Avengers 54, the name is given for the first time as Aragorn. Aragorn, Aragorn right. Uh. After Lord of the Rings, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, again, your classic Silver Age. Oh, they attacked me. Ah, screw them. Come yeah. on. <laughs> screw you guys. I'm going home. <laughs> yeah, there are two lives hanging the balance, but screw you guys. <laughs> 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 I brought Magneto to Earth, but you can take care of it. Well, admittedly, I mean, he didn't really announce who he was. Well, no, they saw the black thing coming from a mile away, and nobody knows he's taking over. (laughs) Exactly. Yeah, they they don't know that his uncle's dead. I mean, they saw his uncle, or the Iron Man presumably told them that the original Black Knight fell and was presumed missing or dead, but they never actually saw him die. So for all the Avengers know, this could be the original Black Knight in a different costume. So it's completely understandable that they attack him. I don't understand what Dane was thinking. Again, we, I don't know. I'm like, what was the point of bringing in the Black Knight? And then they're like, I'm not going to help you guys. Yeah, bye guys. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I I wonder, I wonder if they, they were on a push to get some more new characters at that point in time. Maybe, maybe some new heroes. Because it's so, I was thinking about this. It's so weird because I'm like, did they think Ant Man and the Wasp were going to be bigger than this? Well, part, you know, pun intended. Uh, but you know, yeah. with, like, with all the tales of suspense and all those other books, I mean, they spun off Captain America, Iron Man, mm. Thor, uh, right. Hulk, you know, it, you know, they just spun off everyone else, but meanwhile, it's like. Hank Pym yeah. and the Gina Van Dyne really never got their own book. Yeah, they kind of were relegated to this. Yeah. Yeah. And that part was, um, I had to boo Janet too because she was wearing some fur. The part where they were oh, in the casino yeah, and she, yeah, she yeah. shrunk down. She said, Oh, my new mink stole. Oh, no. I was like, Oh, boo, boo, Janet. I know, but it, one, it was a different time, and two, she was no, supposed to be a little, yeah. Oh, she was a socialite, I know, but yeah, I thought more of Janet than that. But I think that's why they they had Captain America quit the team because I, I've, as I've heard from industry uh, for writers, it's like, yeah, it is a lot easier to write a team book when no one has their own solo books. So you don't. Have to that's like, true. What's exactly. going on over there? <laughs> yeah, you don't have to consult other writers and editors and find out what they're doing. Yeah, because Iron Man and Thor weren't in this either, really. Mm-mm. Uh, 
Oh, I love when Hawkeye's like swinging to the mansion and stuff, and all those people in the street are like, here, sign this, sign this, <laughs> give me an autograph. <laughs> and he's got to be at least two, three stories up, and then they're like, ah, bah, who needs him, that pony? Why can't he hear us? <laughs> I was just stopping. I was stopping at mid swing to sign my autograph. It was cool to see him doing some Spider Man stuff too, swinging around through the city. I was like, oh, go Hawkeye. There you go. Uh, oh, he, ah, oh, what a loser. He's no Captain America. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is this the issue too? When uh, was Hawkeye? It was, uh, one of these Hawkeyes, isn't he talking to the Black Widow? And he's just like, get off my case, Dame Captain America. Yeah. <laughs> and again, it's like, you don't see the Black Widow like this these days, but she's like, oh, Saba. Oh, oh, yeah, she was all crying on the bed. It's like, yeah. Or, you know, when she retired, and it's just like, oh. Retired, I really, yeah. I really love the Black Widow. Yeah, and she, she dyed her hair. Her hair is black in this instead of red. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought it was funny too when when Magneto kicked the toad. Silence, you grotesque, groveling gargoyle. They can be of far more use to me than you could ever be. Nice. Yeah, some classic uh, dick move from Magneto. Punching Quicksilver in the face. <laughs> uh, yeah, this could have been, I mean, especially especially with Scarlet Witch, this could have gone way wrong. He doesn't know that those are his children. So yeah. Right. <laughs> I know they could have been terrible. He, uh, he seems obsessed with them. I'm, I'm trying to remember if we ever got a story like that where he's just like a little too obsessed with them, especially yeah. her. Like, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Just don't do it. Yeah, and her hair was a different color in this as well. It was yeah, like hers is darker. Jet, jet black as well. I thought, what's going on with the colors here? Somebody got their hands on a bottle of black hair dye apparently went crazy i think they did that for a while but i mean i'm trying to remember when they go you know went to like the brown but it's like does it kind of track is right now it, now i mean when did they come up with the whole i don't know romany thing because again right oh. now are, are they just like eastern european or something i I think so, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't think they had put a whole lot of time into their origins at that point, had they? No, I don't yeah. think. It's like, oh, yeah, he scooped them up out of some European uh, country. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think old Roy was doing his best to kind of flesh out a little bit of their origins as much as he could at the time. I mean, unless uh, someone's but... just that uh, with some. Uh, Somebody selling black hair dye is making a huge profit off the half of these female characters. Yeah. The Avengers love that stuff. They buy it by the caseload. <laughs> Jarvis is like, dives his head. <laughs> Just a dab here. Just a dab there. Uh, uh, oh, uh. Oh yeah, I love how yeah, Quicksilver escapes and it's like calling for the Avengers. <laughs> it's he, what's he calling? It looks like he picks up like a little microphone, but then like you know, <laughs> looks like Jarvis is picking up a regular telephone, like or, <laughs> a rotary phone. I know exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Uh, wait, is it? Oh, the auxiliary phone. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's what, of course it's their auxiliary phone because no one took the call on the lower level. Yeah, I also like the part the the little flashback with um, Dane's uncle, the first Black Knight. How he yes, how he kind of survived that fall, but didn't. <laughs> he survived just long enough to like just long to, enough the to crawl call, the to crawl call. an abandoned farmhouse, call his his nephew, have his nephew carry him. And then it basically it's the same thing. It's just like you must yeah. use my use my inventions for good instead of evil, like I did. Yes, it's not too late for you. There is another Skywalker. And if you look at Dane Whitman in this issue, and then look, I don't know, maybe twenty or thirty years later, he looks t completely different. Oh yeah, I mean, especially if you look at the bottom of like page eleven, you know, you know when the when the uncle's on the deathbed, like yeah, teaching yeah. him. I mean, he looks like, uh, I mean, Man Mountain Marco. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 yeah. 
Oh yeah, real uh, cool that face. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looks like he's ready to bend your fingers backwards. Wild like an animal. <laughs> Uh, I wish that he had kept that lance thing, the the power lance. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because I thought, you know, the ebony blade is cool and all, but it's kind of limited because you can't really. Well, for one thing, it's not a ranged weapon, and for another thing, if you run into somebody who, like a robot, let's say, or somebody who's not a robot, you run into the whole problem with the ebony curse, which we discover later on. If you cut somebody with that blade, then things start to happen to you. Oh, yeah. And then they mentioned about, like, uh, the reprinted stories about the old, like, uh, the original Black Knight from King Arthur's Court and stuff. And I'm like, mm. I'm like, that wasn't him, was it? Because wasn't there stories where, like, he time traveled and he was, like, back in... Uh... I think so, yeah. Yeah. I think they did one or two of those time travel things. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and then uh, what is it in the nineties when uh, him and Cersei left the Avengers? Where'd they go? The Ultraverse. <laughs> they went to the Ultraverse for a hot minute before Marvel bought that and grew to that whole company. Oh my lord! I mean, think about how many characters we shipped off in the nineties. I mean, we'll, I'm sure we'll get into this later, but it's like oh, yeah. we shipped off uh, Black Knight and Cersei, and then we did the whole Heroes Reborn thing. Ugh. Even Justin won't touch. I mean, yeah. you're a little oh, good best friend because she's like, she loves you because you'll do all the 90s stuff I want to do that she doesn't want to do. <laughs> but even he but won't I draw, touch. Even yeah, he I, draw the, I draw the line at Heroes Reborn and Zero Hour. Those, those are two that I will never, ever go back to. See, she'll do Zero Hour, Hale. Oh, <laughs> oh, my God. But wait till you see what some of the stuff we get to this year, kids, uh, especially a certain month. But I'm just. Oh, yes. <laughs> And you'll be like, wait, wait for April. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wait till you hear April, folks. We got something special lined up for that month. <laughs> I don't know if the joke's on us or on you, folks. <laughs> oh my God. Can you imagine? I, uh, I don't know if Russell listens, but Russell's going to, if Russell hears that, he'll be like, it's the damn Hulk 2099. Got to rub that one in. <laughs> No, Russell, we're not doing Hulk 2099 all yeah. month long in April. <laughs> Even I couldn't handle that <laughs> for a whole month. Oh, my God. Just his reaction. I don't want to go through that. <laughs> Today we're doing Hulk 2099. Number one. <laughs> Never again. Never again. Oh. <laughs> uh. Poor Russell. He was such a good sport with that. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. That Magneto just, like, r raising Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch up. <laughs> let me show. Let me remind you once again of my magnetic powers. <laughs> yes. You forget who I am? Well, you kind of look like our dad, but... Oh, Lord. Oh, yeah. Then, uh, yeah. Hank Pym and Janet got to come back from Vegas after stopping that guy from cheating. Yeah. I love that little side plot at the casino. How random. No, but it no. makes sense that Janet would be in the casino. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. But then they get back to Avengers headquarters and, uh, yeah, she changes into her bathing suit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love every guy. Is, every guy is basically covered head to toe except for like the bottom of their face. And yeah, she's. I I remember years ago there was some website that had like a whole gallery of all of the different costumes that the Wasp oh, has yeah. had over the years. I couldn't believe it. Oh yeah, if it still exists, but it had like a picture of every single costume. I couldn't believe it. I can't remember how many there were, but it was amazing. I'm trying to remember, except for like that first red one she had. I don't know if she's ever, does she ever had like one that she, uh, maybe in the 80s? She had the key um, one, but yeah, for a while it seemed like I think they had her like every story like changing costume. Yeah, it, it wasn't. I think in Avengers West Coast, she had one for a little while. That oh, was the, the blue same. one. Maybe. Yeah. It was like a blue and white one or something like yeah. that. But, but yeah, for the most part, yeah, she changed them like pretty much every week. 
Which makes sense. Yeah, if you're the wasp and you got that much money, why not? We can afford all that unstable molecules. Yeah, why the hell not? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> <sighs> yeah, this was a good issue. It was weird though, like like we were saying, how he just kind of took off at the end. He's like, "Screw you guys, I'm going home," and then that was it. I know um, it's weird, except for like introducing the Black Knight. This issue is basically like an interlude because even like you know, once uh yeah. Goliath, uh, Wasp, and Hawkeye are there. It's like, oh, how are we going to find Pietro and uh, Wanda? We don't know where they yeah. called from. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was more like an interlude from the from the Magneto story, which they focus again on in the next issue. I mean, I would assume they, they knew they had more plans for the Black Knight, but it's almost like, yeah, you like that Black Knight? All right, and let us know. Maybe we'll use him again. Yeah, sometime. let us know. Yeah. You might see him again in the pages of The Avengers. Or is it just like, ah, he pissed us off. Maybe he's a new villain. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe the Masters of Evil are hiring. Oh. Oh. Uh-oh. Uh, oh, yeah, he does call the horse Pegasus. There's the Avengers Mansion. <laughs> oh, yeah, Hawkeye shoots it. Hawkeye's the, of course, Hawkeye's the first one. Shoots an arrow at him. Oh, Those naturally. Fools. Those fools. <laughs> Shoot first and ask questions later. Why are they attacking me? Even though I'm dressed like someone who's tried to kill them. <laughs> and the wasp ricochets off that lance, makes it accidentally yeah. fire. Uh, don't you don't you hate that when your lance auto <laughs> accidentally fires off a show? Oh, <laughs> an unexpected fire. <laughs> Never a good time for anyone yeah. involved. Uh, oh, I, I, I love what, yeah, the, the shot accidentally fires and like hits the chimney because Goliath's like, that chimney, some sort of laser beam, demolishing it, Hawkeye. Who who gave you the first clue, Nancy Drew? <laughs> <laughs> uh, he grabs that thing and throws it. But even Hank Pym, he's like, at first I thought maybe it was a new Black Knight because he looks different, but he's like, no, he attacked us. No, he's got to be evil. And then Hawkeye's like, ah, I'll fire some more arrows at him. And Pym's like, no, 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 you might hit some of the buildings behind you. So they called in all the ants and bugs and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it really is a good issue. It's just, mm -hmm. it's kind of weird the way that it was set up. Yeah. It kind of feels like this whole confrontation with the Black Knight should have been kind of in the middle of the comic book, and then the stuff with Magneto could have been like put at the beginning and the end. Yeah, because wouldn't it be cool if like the Black Knight like went with them to help? Yeah, yeah. Beat Magneto, especially since he brought him to Earth. But you know, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that would have been a great way to kind of shoehorn him into the team too, have him help them against Magneto because Magneto's powers don't work against the Ebony Blade, so. I could have been like, oh, yeah, you're not going to turn my sword against me, Magneto. Your powers don't work. But maybe they did that in another issue. May yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my Lord, no, I was just thumbing through uh, 49. Oh, my God, the Wasp is wearing such a 60s dress in this. Uh... Very 60s, yeah. <laughs> It's like a black dress with like white something or other hanging off it uh, everywhere. It's like, oh my god! It's the mink stole. Just get that mink stole on. Hank and Jan, you know the original Sonny and Cher. <laughs> Before it all went wrong. Oh yeah! Oh, behind the avenging. <laughs> And then in the summer of, well, what was it? Sometime in the 80s. Hank Pym had his next breakdown. Yeah. That's when things got physical. Yeah. Oh, poor Jan. And I swear, how many other characters have had, like, shady stuff like that in their past? And it just seems like Hank Pym is, like, the one, like, you never forgive. It. They never forgive. It. Don't forgive everybody else, but not Hank Pym. Yeah. Even tried to kill himself at one point and, uh, after that in West Coast Avengers. Yeah. Was blew his brains out yeah hank's been on quite a journey hasn't he i know i don't know is it just like they didn't know what to do with him especially when scott lang comes around it's like oh yeah, yeah you have an ant-man again and yeah 
Well, let's make him yellow jacket and see how that goes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe it's because, uh, like, you know, I love the, that old West Coast Avengers run, but I like them as just Dr. Piff. <laughs> Me too. That was my favorite incarnation of him when he had that yeah. big uh, red, red jumpsuit, jumpsuit on with all the pockets and he could just stuff. pull out any old gadget that he wanted. And yeah, it was yeah, fantastic. Man, he, yeah, he had a hovercraft in there. It's just like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like and it was great. <laughs> uh huh. I used to love that little hovercraft. It looked like one of those little bubble things from G.I. Joe. Those yes. trouble bubble things. Is that a hovercraft in your pocket? You're just happy to see. <laughs> <laughs> you can enlarge anything, folks. Wow. <laughs> oh, my God. But how could you not love that old West Coast Avengers? It was him, Wonder Man. You had Iron Man in and out of there. Tigra. Tigra. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. yeah. Hawkeye, uh, Mockingbird. Okay, yeah. so and, okay, so we we oh, there we go. There's the trifecta. I was gonna say we've mentioned Hercules, we mentioned Tiger, and now we've mentioned Moon Knight. Uh, yeah, I think we know who's uh, who <laughs> who this episode is dedicated to, don't we? <laughs> yeah, his ears are burning as we speak. Uh, yeah, and Hercules cool. is looking like a a biscuit in this one too. The George oh, Tusker can draw quite a biscuit Hercules <laughs> with a clean shaven face. So, so oh my. Hercules stepping right out of Archie comics here. Who's the better biscuit, Hercules with beard or no beard? Definitely beardless. Ah. Yeah. I, I'm not into the beard look. Do you think maybe so like they were afraid at certain for most of his history where they're like, like, yeah, we want him to look ancient, so maybe we need to give him a beard or something. Yeah. I don't know. I, I yeah, I think kind of think that that was also a decision to make him look different from Thor War. at the time. Yeah. Because they were both clean shaven at that point. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But Thor was a blonde. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who's, your favorite, who's your favorite god? Yeah, that's it. It's so weird. It's like you have modern superheroes running around with gods. Now we have uh, medieval knights, kind of, sort of. Yeah. Yep. And mutants. It was a. It was quite a, a hodgepodge mix of characters back in the sixties. Like you said, I wonder if they were like looking for the next big thing to hit. You know. Mm. Yeah, because at this point, the the Avengers membership was still like just in the, I think, single digits. I don't think they had gotten over 10 members at that point i was gonna I mean, say they that, had... yeah because the black panther demon show up at this point did he uh, well he might <gasps> have but oh this is before vision because i think vision is like another like maybe 10 issues away or something mm -hmm. yeah so this is pre-vision too yeah, yeah so so... The, the roster was really small at this point and i think when i after i reread this i was thinking well maybe that's what they were doing they were kind of testing the waters with new characters and new heroes to see who could be a, who was popular and who could be a good fit for the team to fill out the ranks a little bit so that you could have characters like captain america go off and do their own thing in their own book for a while and have all the supporting characters have their own book in the avengers and have cap and iron man and thor and people like that come in from time to time when they needed a hand Oh yeah, I wonder if they were if they were trying to recreate you know the formula of the Fantastic Four, where it's like yeah, none of these characters individually have their own books. So. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Because I always found that weird because I think they said Stanley created the Fantastic Four to like uh, compete with uh, the Justice League. I'm like, wouldn't they? I mean, they came later, but wouldn't the Avengers be the? Yeah. Yeah. Unless Unless that, that's what it was. It was just like, yeah, the Fantastic Four is really not analogous with the Justice League. So, No, no. Yeah, because yeah, that's, 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 that's more of a family them. rather than a team. Like, Yeah. Yeah. And the Justice League was those characters with like their own individual books and stuff. So, Right. Yeah, no, I would call the Avengers more, yeah, more along the lines of a, a rival to that theme than Fantastic Four. Yeah. So yes, we must make a team of members who have their own books. <laughs> and Loki must bring them together to fight the Hulk uh, hiding yes. out in the circus. <laughs> and it worked. 
as a robot. <laughs> Excelsior. Uh, all right, Justin. Any other thoughts on uh, any of this? No, it was I. It was also cool to see Magneto show up in a book that wasn't the X Men. Yeah, I always liked it. I always liked it when he showed up to to plague, like Captain America or Avengers or Fantastic Four, even like just somebody other than the X Men. I always thought that that was cool. Oh, or even like that uh, Acts of Vengeance issue from Captain America when uh, <laughs> Magneto comes up to the Red Skull. The Red Skull, yeah, that was one of my favorite issues of that whole oh, of yeah. that whole story. And you're really cheering him on this time because it's like, hey, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, smack that Nazi around. Yeah. Yeah. And that uh, Mark Greenwald wrote wrote such a great oh, Red yeah. Skull because he really showed what an ass the Red Skull was. I, I'll never forget in that particular issue when Magneto tracks him down, the Red Skull hightails it to this little secret elevator. And yeah. as he's going down the elevator, he gives a Nazi salute to Magneto. Oh, oh yeah. And yeah. I'm like, you, whoa, you. <laughs> yeah, you a hole. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> Yeah, guy, guy was in a concentration camp. You're giving him. Yeah. I know you're gonna give him a Nazi salute on the way down. Well, what do you think's gonna happen? Oh, uh, yeah that 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 issue was perfect because it showed just what an ass the Red Skull is. <laughs> oh yeah, I love Mark Bruno, <laughs> Captain America. We can cover that anytime. <laughs> yes, it's the best. <laughs> that's what he Definitely was saying. That. That's when he was in a clone body of Captain America. He's like, who? Well, I'm not the original Red Skull. Who, me? Yeah, who me? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, oh, Red Skull was giving it to all the villains back then because, like, late, later on, what was it like a year or so later? Streets of Poison, when yes, he, him and Kingpin, yeah, he gets in a fight with the Kingpin, yeah, Kingpin sits on him, <laughs> I was like, oh, on top of him, yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, so, oh, you know what? He gave, he gave him that finishing move, he gave him the old Kingpin titties. <laughs> no, I invented that, you dick. <laughs> a Russell, full face full of them. <laughs> Russell, so uh, Russell, so uh, lovingly puts it. Yeah, Kingpin titties. <laughs> They're deadly weapons in certain states. Over a year ago, you did. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Red Skull, though. He, he, every time he goes up against another supervillain, he gets his ass kicked. Oh, he's a he's a Nazi. F him. <laughs> Doctor Doom, Magneto, like Kingpin, like they have all wiped the floor with the Red Skull. Like he's such a loser. Doom that college dropout. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, kids, keep 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 your eyes tuned or your ears tuned to Ultimate Spider Cast because I'm serious. I, me and Lil think uh, Betty Brant is like on a Doctor Doom level uh, yeah. manipulator there. The Bride of Mephisto. <laughs> no, that's a <Aunt> May. <laughs> No, Lil said Uncle Ben's Mephisto. Yeah. Or Satanish at the very least. Oh, yeah. <laughs> One of those other ones. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you reading any dark web like in the spider books right now? No, no, I haven't read it. Oh, my yet. God. Mary Jane and Black Cat are in limbo and they just ran into Belasco. I'm like, I never liked this guy. Oh, Belasco. I haven't yeah. heard of him in a while. Yeah. Is he still kicking around in limbo? I guess. Yeah. I'm like, I've wow. never been a big fan. Really? I thought he was kind of cool with the uh, missing arm. And everything. Maybe depending on the story, but I'm just like, yeah. There's one I really liked in the Fantastic Four. Oh, yeah. Limbo, and they had to deal with him and Master Pandemonium. That one was cool. But yeah, I think it depends on the story. And oh, yeah. how did that go with Mary Jane and, and the Black Cat dealing with that? Um, they're still kind of in the middle of it. But, uh, I mean, it, it's a good story. I mean, well, Mary Jane and Black Cat being written right now by our good friend, Mr. Jen McKay. So, oh, well, yeah. yeah then it's going to be good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I love his stuff. That's strange. Oh, of course, Moon Knight. Moon Knight's been excellent. Of course, Moon Knight. Oh, yeah. I love that so much. Moon Knight Consistent. Got runs around in a white outfit. Relieving people of their facial features. Consistently amazing, Moon Knight. Keeps fighting vampires. You know what's coming, right? <laughs> <laughs> We've got to get Jed, Jed on Alpha Flight, though. We have to do that. That's my new mission, is to get 
a, an Alpha Flight comic written by Jed McKay. I want to see oh, that. Oh, yeah. He said, he said he'd be down for it. Yeah. Even if it's a limited series, like a mini series or something, I'd still love to see that come yeah, to give fruition. It five. Give it five. He seems like their magic number anymore is five. <laughs> <laughs> don't take him off Moon Knight, though. You can take him off some other book to write Alpha Flight, but don't take him off Moon Knight. I know. Every anytime, like we like say, oh, we should, we want to see this book. Like that, Jed's like the top one of the top names on our list. So, like me and Loaf, I'm just like, I'm like, I don't want to kill the man, but you know, <laughs> make this like Jed's sixth or seventh book. I don't. Think. <laughs> Well, he also writes that Magic the Gathering one, too. Yes, for, yeah. For the other companies, so yeah. And a lot of these guys, you know, a lot of the uh, guys, you know, have, like, creator and stuff going on. and uh... Which I think is fantastic. I love that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we were talking to Mr. DG Chichester again today. Mm. Uh, he's going to have something coming later this year, too. Like Ooh, a nice. Thing. Yeah. He has, he's, not even, like, he's not even telling us about a lot of details yet, but, yeah, supposedly. Yeah, he's wonder if it's ninjas. Up artists and stuff oh and it better be ninjas <laughs> if it's ninjas that's I'm, that's my guess it's but, ninjas if you're not dg chichester you can't write ninjas <laughs> <laughs> that's right that is oh, the truth we're trying we were trying to set it up today because he said he's he was well fast if he's going to be at any conventions and he said he's looking for some i said oh you should uh come on come uh, down here for steel city con i said that's that's oh. going to be the weekend of my birthday when Lil oh Lil, we were talking about maybe go and i said oh my god how great would that be if he was there and then me and Lil it, together could go see him yes oh that would be fantastic yeah probably get a lot oh, i hope that i hope that happens probably get a live chichester chat that much <laughs> <laughs> i love it sit around dinner or something be like can you do you see what's going on <laughs> that convention i love that idea i hope that that happens that would be fantastic that way maybe you could sign lil's action figure i got lil a couple figures for christmas oh nice one of them is that you know the uh, daredevil and the chichester gray and red suit uh oh yeah i love that suit actually yeah, yeah. and just to be nice. a, just, and just to be a dick i got her a ben riley spider-man figure oh <laughs> Are they are they regular figures or are they Funkos? No, they're regular figures. Yeah, okay. no, 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 yeah. Nice. That's awesome. Oh, what's the other one? Oh, I got her. Uh, what are they? Uh, oh, what Superman or Bat? What are, the Superman dressed as Batman from Speeding Bullets? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's like a newer. Uh, I think McFarlane figure. Yeah. Nice. But no, she said she liked them all. I be, I think even the Ben Rally. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure the figure looked cool. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. They've been doing such a good job in those. But yeah, still City Con. Get Chichester in there. Mm. Yes, that would be amazing. Could do a live Chichester chats. That'd be awesome. <sighs> All right. Anything else? Steve? I think that's about it for these two pretty light issues. But I'm glad we covered them, Phil, because it, yes. like I said, it'd been a long time since I read them, and I wanted to. I wanted to see again where the black knight started out because it was foggy for me i, for, I had forgotten yeah, i knew that he got his, his stuff from his uncle but i couldn't remember like really where he's uh, how he started out in this journey of his yeah i think i read these maybe once and i had forgotten that he like it was actually like a deathbed you know oh you must do <clears throat> my place but do good not evil yeah yeah, I'd forgotten that too. And his his whole fight with the Avengers, I'd forgotten about that. That they had had this beginning battle. Yeah. I know. His first appearance is basically like, oh, I'm coming to help you guys. Ah, oh, you threw something at me. I screw you guys. I'm going home. <laughs> That's essentially all that it was. Seriously. But it was still fun. Yeah. I remember and, getting the last page. I'm like, oh yeah, I guess that's it. Yeah, he's he's giving them the, the mean mug over his shoulder. Meanwhile, Quick, Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch are still sitting there waiting. <laughs> yeah, they're tapping their feet like, "Come on, guys!" Like, Magneto's going to start pulling the pulling the fillings out of our teeth here in a minute. If you're not you're gonna come and get us out of here, <laughs> tap 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 in my way downtown. 
<laughs> All right. So this was this is the last episode for January. So next month, that's mm. right, kids. We're gonna you're well, you're gonna be getting more Hank Pym, Janet Van Dyne, Scott Lang, uh Kang. Kang the Conqueror. Uh, so yes, next episode we're gonna be covering Tales to Astonish 27, the first appearance of Hank Pym and yes. number 35. So classic. And then in two weeks, we'll do Tales to Astonish 44 and 45, the first Janet Van Dyne as the Wasp. Yep. And then we'll do Marvel Premiere 47 and 48, the first Scott Lang Ant-Man. And then we will round out the month with Avengers 8 and 11, your first Kang-ish appearances. So. Mm -hmm. Some good stuff on the way. Oh, yeah. Some classic some classics. I think that I think that Avengers Eleven is the Spider Man robot one, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Which was which was referenced? Oh, was that this week? Yeah. Uh, Avengers. Uh, what was it? War through time. Yeah. Written oh, did Spider they Man. reference the robot? Yes. It, it, oh, it, no kidding. It kind of takes place like right after that. Yeah. 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 Oh, I love it. <laughs> Written by Paul Levitz. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Okay. Art by Alan Davis. Oh, fantastic! I gotta get that. That was a, I thought it was a good start. Uh, Anything with Alan Davis, I'll buy it. Exactly. So yeah, kids. So lots of uh, Ant Man and the Wasp and Kang stuff. Mm. I, oh, I guess there's a new trailer for Quantum Mania. I haven't watched it yet, but like people online were like, I guess Modok's in it, and people are like, Ooh, Modok's oh, Modok, yes. so ugly. I'm like, yeah, it's Modok. Yeah, do you not know who Modok is? He's all head. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's supposed to look like that. And it's a, just a brief glimpse anyway. Yeah. Modoc. I uh, I can't believe I can't believe we're we, we already have Guardians of the Galaxy, Modoc. I mean DC can't get a decent Batman or Superman movie this week. <laughs> <laughs> or the Flash. Justice League. Oh, no. We can't get one Flash movie out the gate. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Wonder, Wonder Woman. All you need is a hot chick. Give her a halfway decent story. Oh my god. Oh, it hurts my soul on multiple levels. I know. I'm a fan of DC. I want them to do good. Me too. But that's and I loved. I loved Black Adam. Like I, I'm unapologetically loved that because it was fun. It was different. It was fun to look at it was nice to look at they did a good job i thought with dr fate and the justice society which is what i was really there for oh yeah but, i was gonna i was gonna say hawkman and Do uh dr fate made that movie though yeah absolutely if it weren't for them i wouldn't have had any interest whatsoever in that exactly but um i thought it was still entertaining but yeah the with the exception of the batman movie with robert pattinson which i, I still think was tremendous i just I can't handle it. I just can't. And I, I'm I'm still gonna check out Blue Beetle because I think that's gonna be fun. Mm -hmm. I think that's gonna be like kind of like the um the the sleeper, I guess you could say the sleeper hit. Oh yeah. But yeah, the rest of the DC stuff, oh yeah. Guess we gotta see what James Gunn's gonna do. Mm. Yeah. All right, kids, but yeah, send us your thoughts on uh, yeah, all the uh, all the stuff coming up. You can write to us on this issue. Uh, yeah, send us your thoughts. The Black Knight. Are you excited yeah. for him to show up in the MCU as well? Or how much of a biscuit is Hercules? So write mm. us. So write us, yes. Ray, Ray. Email us capesaylunatics at gmail .com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38-CAPES. And remember, you can follow Marvel Tales on Facebook. Facebook, on Twitter, uh, find Capes and Lunatics on Instagram, uh, Capes and Lunatics Podcast Network on Hive, uh, the YouTube channel. We have hit 269 and gone beyond already, yes. so help us get through 369. Yes, yeah, so we've got a little ways to go, so keep on subscribing. Smash that subscribe button. Uh, Smash it! Help us get to 369. And again, the Patreon. Uh, Again, this is our passion project. We're paying for this ourselves. So every little bit helps, but three to five dollars gets you early access to create 
creator interviews, including the monthly Chichester chats. The newest one just hit Patreon today. So see, you'd have that already if you were a patron. That's, that's right. Join me in the Patreon elite because I'm going to listen, listen later tonight to the new Chichester chats. I got the good mic out for you guys. And again, all the old content is up there. Superhero movie brackets. Uh, enjoy my pain. Uh, my, my year of hell. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and again, more stuff is coming. Uh, it, yeah, this month, January, Lilith and I are going to, I think next week we're going to do this or that, where we just ask each other this, that, or the other thing questions. Uh, A Q&A session. Yes. Yeah. So if you guys if you guys want to give uh Lil some Sophie's choices, yes, email me. <laughs> uh <laughs> lots, lots of returning shows. Maybe we don't do any more like uh Wage World, uh maybe some yeah, so the Deadpool stuff, some quantum zone perhaps. Uh Mm, again, Chuck, for again zone. if you're a patron, you're you can throw us lots of suggestions. Uh Justin. In the Patreon Elite here has right. uh, thrown us a few things. So, yeah. a lot of this year may be programmed by Justin because I don't think we're going to be paid. It's not us any ideas yet. <laughs> Come on, Russell and Ray. I know you got a few ideas in there. Oh my God. Get like a uh, episode where like Lilith and Russell just sit there and have like some kind of Mountain Dew. Uh, yes, yeah. They discuss the different flavors of Mountain Dew and which one is better and why, and which one is terrible and why. And Ray, do they have <laughs> Ray? Do they have Mountain Dew in Australia? I mean, we. I mean, we had to explain to him who the Kool Aid Man was because we were playing. Oh yeah, top, and he didn't know who the Kool Aid Man was. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and then he's like, "Oh, the Kool Aid Man with the C." We're like, "No, no, no, it's a K. It's a K, bro." <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, some of that drop air punch. All right. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, join the patron, become a patron, or pick yourself up with Capes of Lunatics and Capes of Lunatics Sidekicks merch, or just randomly make it rain on us with the Cash App link. Mm. Little Hellfire's personal favorite. Make it rain. Find it all at Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E slash Capes and Lunatics. You know, uh, Little Hellfire, former cheerleader, former strip club DJ. Uh, they were professions. You've probably done it. All right. <laughs> All right, Justin, besides here and besides my Coops Lunatic sidekicks, where are you join me at the end of every month for We Are the Night, the Batman, the podcast. Batman podcast. What other podcasts do you do? I can also be found every month, twice a, twice a month at Gamma Charge, the strongest podcast there is with my pals Russell and Carl, where we talk about everything to do with the Hulk. And by the time that this episode is out, I think we'll have a new episode out by that point where we talk about World War Hulk. And we also have a show um, that we co-host with our good pal Ray, Predator and Prey, the Yaucha podcast. We talk about everything to do with the Predator, comics, movies, books, etc. And last but certainly not least, Tomes of Evil, a comic book supervillain podcast, has been on hiatus for a few months, but will be coming back at the end of January with a new spotlight. And my project, The Lost Library of Legends, is almost ready. I know I've been saying that for a little over a year <laughs> <laughs> on a monthly basis, but I swear it's true. It's almost ready. Well, that escalated quickly. <laughs> Scream at! <laughs> Should have been like, I've been saying it for a year. Scream at! <laughs> and Lilith, if you're listening. Cock a doodle doo! <laughs> That's her favorite. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you, you request Sentia Tongue. She requests. Cock a doodle doo! <laughs> <Stupid biscuit. laughs> Uh, these two are the same. These two are the same. That's right. We're psychic twins. Uh, my children are all the same. <laughs> Even this one is like my age. Yes, my my children. <laughs> all right. Kids. Thank you for joining us again. We're getting plenty of uh, Ant Man, the Wasp, and Kang in February. Yes. So come back. Quantum Mania beckons. And, oh yeah, and that's the other thing. Yeah, send us your thoughts on the issues when you see the movie. Send us 
mm. that is parts of the movie. Cause... Definitely. We'll talk about the movie. I think me and Wolf and Charlie are going to be uh, covering it, uh, Justin. So oh, yeah. If you want to jump in. Oh, we'll, we'll just, yeah, yeah, definitely. I'll just send in my thoughts. Until then, make mine Marvel. That's right. Make mine Marvel.